time. So as you can see, it's a multidisciplinary project uh, involving different uh, areas. So, uh, so identity, particularly, I will start with the evolution of identity, how uh, digital identity evolved uh, with, with the rise of internet. It's uh, identity in the digital world is a bit tricky and it, it doesn't have any uh, ideal solution for still. So it started with a centralized identity uh, where administrative control was by a single authority or hierarchy. So yeah. as you know, uh, there was some organizations such as IANA, uh, which controlled I IP addresses and ICAN, which, is, uh, which controls domain names. And we had certificate authorities uh, since 1995. So these certificate authorities uh, verify that you are the owner of that identity, basically, that you own that public key and so on. So uh, these are more like centralized. If uh, this organization fails, you'll uh, probably lose your identity, digital identity. And then we had federated identity. It's more uh, um, so here. Administrative control will be by multiple federated authorities. So the first example is Microsoft Passport, which was uh, created in 1999 uh, by Microsoft. So here uh, they, they uh, constructed some federa federation of identity uh, organizations. So you could use your identity in more widely uh, with multiple organizations, within the multiple organizations. But still, the central part here was the Microsoft itself. So basically, it's uh, it's still close to centralized identity. And we also had some uh, other examples as Liberty Alliance and so on. Um, <clears throat> as the time evolved and the technology evolved, we uh, researchers think about more user-centric identities. So the user-centric identity is uh, when individual or administrative control uh, across multiple authorities with, without requiring a federation. So here, users are at the center of the identity process. Uh, as an example, we had OpenID uh, from 2005, and it gives you uh, some, uh, some improvements, like you can, you can decide as a user what to share, which information to share, and it's also, uh, you can use your identity in multiple websites, for instance. Uh, one good example was Facebook Connect, uh, which, uh, which was created in 2008 by Facebook. So it's, it has more a user-friendly interface. So basically, because of that, it attracted more users. And maybe you used it, basically. Uh, currently, we have it. So you can uh, uh, you can enter any website with uh, not any, but uh, for some websites you can use your Facebook uh, page as a login. But uh, the problem with user-centric identity is it's uh, it kind of gives you more privileges, but still uh, you are dependent on some organization. In case of Facebook Connect, it's still as a Facebook. So, for instance, if Facebook will be closed soon in the future, you will probably lose your identity, digital identity, your uh, in the internet. So the next, we need some uh, more more user centric identity, uh, which could be self sovereign identity. This concept is uh, is a new concept. And uh, people around the world, researchers, are working on it. And it's uh, here, uh, <clears throat> users are the rulers of their own identity. So basically, uh, users will have more control. They, they will control their identities. And they will decide whom to share it. And there, was, there will not be any uh, centralized authority uh, in this system. <clears throat> 
So it's lifetime portable digital identity for any person, organization, or thing that doesn't depend on any centralized authority. And it, it can never be taken away. It should be portable, it should be persistent, and uh, you shouldn't lose your identity as the time passes. Yeah, so it has many... Uh, so this concept is still... Uh, uh, didn't have exact definition, but from the literature, I can give you some insight about this concept, and if you are interested in it, you can search uh, internet and uh, learn more. Uh, so the Christopher Allen, uh, he wrote an article about self sovereign identity, and the article is describes this concept and he gives some <clears throat> some framework to uh, which which describes this self sovereign SSI basically. So, uh, but so so what what is we have digital identities and we have many challenges with security and also individual freedoms now. So we are currently relying on public key infrastructure. Uh, the, the public key infrastructure is uh, actually costly and it's centralized. And so we basically rely on centralized uh, certificate authorities. So we have many of these issues now. Uh, and this issue should be solved. But, uh, but with blockchain te technology, can we solve this problem? At least I can say that uh, with the rise of blockchain technology, uh, there, 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 uh, many researchers uh, try to solve uh, these uh, problems with identity using the blockchain and relying on uh, distributed ledgers. So it, at least it gives some boost to the, to the field. So many startups from the industry and the acad academy started to be interested in this after after uh, the crea uh, rise of rise of blockchain technology so the blockchain uh, as you know is a decentralized root of trust uh, that nobody owns it's immutable ledger and so it so uh, so it could serve as a decentralized self service register for pu public keys one idea is so it will uh, transform centralized pki to decentralized PKI. Uh, I will give you some example here. So it basically, uh, we have key here public key infrastructure and we have decentralized PKI. So in, this public key infrastructure will rely on certificate authorities, which are, which are central uh, organizations that distribute the, the public key and verify who owns what and who is who. In case of decentralized PKI, uh, users will not rely on any um, centralized organization. Instead of that, the, the, the root of trust will be blockchain. So blockchain will store uh, and connect public keys to private keys and so on. And there are some standards evolving now. Uh, one is decentralized identifiers. So uh, for blockchain to operate, uh, we need some sort of IDs which are persistent and which don't rely on any centralized registry. So we need decentralized identifiers, which is called DIDs. It's a standard uh, developing, currently developing by uh, W3C. It's a worldwide web consortium. And I think it, uh, they almost finished their work. Uh, at the end of 2019, they had final draft and you can uh, you can read about that uh, document. It isn't too long. I think it's like fifteen pages, maybe, uh, uh, from the internet. If you search the IDs W three C, you can uh, the, the first link will be about this uh, standard or recommendation, let's say, because it isn't still finalized. So uh, the IDs uh, are open standard. Uh, Anyone can issue uh, DIDs, and uh, any anyone can verify it. So it 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 will be uh, on the on the top layer of blockchain, as you can see. So we have issue, 
and we have verifier and we have decentralized identifiers layer here so everyone uh, and it should be globally resolvable and but this id as you can see uh, is kind of looks like a url uh, here is an example so it's uh, it's just numbers and so on so you don't uh, get much information about the user so it has uh, attached did document so this did and did document is kind of key value pair so this did document stores all um, metadata about you about uh, your entity and it stores also the proofs and also public keys and so on i can show you uh, one example here So this is from uh, so this is decentralized identifiers um, web page uh, which contains the document talking about. So here, uh, so its uh, working group is W3C, and uh, here you can look at this, and it's basically uh, written not very technical. Uh, on the high level, uh, I think so. Anyone can understand what what is DID and what is the DID documents. So if we if we click DID documents, uh, here the format will be JSON, uh, and so yeah, so it it will contain some public keys, and it will contain your ID, and also it should contain some proofs. Yeah. So the format will be like this. So it it's basically some metadata about you. Uh, it will contain your DID and also some public keys and also some proofs. Uh, yeah. So basically, uh, this pair will define. your identity. Uh, <clears throat> second standard is verifiable credentials. So here, uh, <clears throat> the credentials are uh, <clears throat> part of our daily lives. So basically, everyone here has some driver license or government ID, for instance, but they are hard copies, yeah? Uh, you, you, might, you might lose them or, or at least, you, <clears throat> but you can <clears throat> show them to verify your identity. But uh, we don't have a clear system in online, in on the web, the same system in, on the web. So this standard tries to <clears throat> create some directions on how to uh, develop the system on the online, basically. So, uh, so credentials on the web that are uh, cryptographically secure, privacy preserving, and uh, machine verifiable. So uh, the verifiable credentials, uh, uh, this, the overall system is shown here. So this is a basic model. We'll have issuers like banks or uh, government or uh, any university, for instance. And the holder is uh, we, users. And we'll have verifiers. For instance, after you graduate, um, 
university, you will have your diploma certificate. And if you want to show it to your employer, for instance, you just take your hard copy and go to your employer and show it. But if your employer is, let's say you are applying to US and so on, you have to verify your um, certificates online. And some universities have that opportunity, but others not. So we don't have global system that could uh, easily help us to verify our certificates. So this standard uh, is basically describes that scenario in, on the web. The so uh, verifier could be uh, any, any organization, uh, employer, and so on. So here, verifiable data register, registry is, could be blockchain, for instance. Uh, I will give you one example. So here, uh, for instance, you as an issue, we have MIT, let's say. And MIT uh, creates bachelor's certificate for Bob. And it signs it with its uh, private key. And uh, so it will be stored in the blockchain. So it will, certificate will be on the ledger. And Bob will... Uh, so it will be issued to the Bob, to Bob, and he will, he will, he can share it with your, uh, with his employer. Uh, uh, so employer is his. Here is the verifier, and verifier will just check it from the blockchain, uh, check signatures, and verifies that uh, that is the right person and the right organization which give him the certificate. So uh, if we can implement it in user friendly way. I think it would be a good, uh, good <clears throat> system to use. So uh, for blockchain case, what kind of blockchain we can use here? It depends on, uh, so it, we have yeah, different blockchains. We have Bitcoin and Ethereum, which are public networks, largest public networks. Uh, we, uh, there are also some private blockchains like Hyperledger. So, this uh, graph describes overall, uh, like it could be public, private. So public are Bitcoin and Ethereum. Anyone can read and write it to, to present uh, to the ledger. Private, only uh, allowed organizations can do that. So in case of Hyperledger, it's uh, more like for enterprises. So some enterprises will create some blockchain and only them can uh, see what's happening on the blockchain and uh, right on the on the ledger and this sovereign is more uh, for identity so it's one initiative uh, by some people who uh, want to contribute on a field of uh, self-sovereign identities the sovereign they are using a public blockchain so any can anyone can see it but it's permissioned which means not everyone can write on the ledger so only uh, some some organizations which are verified could write on them, on, on the blockchain. Uh, so basically it depends uh, in the current system uh, for self-sovereign identity, for example, uh, everyone is choosing different blockchains. So, uh, so this, the overall field is uh, scattered. I mean, everyone is trying to approach the SSI uh, everyone is trying to contribute, but they are choosing different uh, methodologies, or I, I, I could say, so they are approaching the uh, question differently. So some are choosing public blockchain, some are private, some are uh, just using some distributed systems, not even blockchain. So yeah. Um, so in case of self-sovereign identity, it's uh, as I told you, it's a new field, and so this <coughs> systematic literature review shows that for self-sovereign identity, if we search for Google Scholar, first table, and second is for IEEE, IEEE Explorer, and third is a web of knowledge. So it's, it contains all uh, academic literature, papers, and so on. So <coughs> as you can see, relevant articles are a few for uh, for each uh, search, for SSI, SSI definition, self-sovereignty, we are getting less results. So it means basically it's a new field and uh, still 
it needs some contribution from researchers and so on. And if you are interested, you can search for it and try to contribute to this field because everyone is basically new and uh, we don't have, we need uh, many things to, do, to be done basically. So, but we have some SSI systems currently, which are proposed by uh, researchers and industry people. So I will give you uh, some criteria. The framework, which, uh, which is based on Christopher Allen's work and other literature, and it could help us to evaluate SSI systems, basically. Um, <clears throat> so let's go through it together. The first one is user control and consent. So in SSI system, uh, let's say users must control their identities. So they should decide uh, what personal data uh, they will share and to whom. Uh, second is privacy and protection. So, uh, so they, uh, it's very close to the first one. So the privacy of users should be protected. They, they, they should have some disclosure, uh, disclosure uh, minimized disclosure. And identity owner governs how data is collected, shared, and used. Third, is, uh, third uh, criteria is no trust in central authority. Basically, yeah, uh, there shouldn't be um, any singular third party that controls the whole system. It should be distributed, decentralized. Fourth is portability. Portability means that you can transport your information easily to another place uh, in the web, on the web. So you shouldn't lose it because it's dependent on one database or dependent on one, the, one system and so on. So it should be portable. So fifth criteria is transparency. By transparency, we don't mean that all your information should be transparent. Here, uh, more like systems and protocols must be transparent. So um, it, sh it could be open source, should be well known, and independent architecture. So uh, currently, we have some open source projects. And so it's a good example of how should things to be done for like public. And for identity, I, I believe that uh, the systems and protocols should be transparent. Everyone can see and verify that uh, everything is OK. Six is interoperability. So uh, we, did, we need global identities. So every person should be able to use uh, his online uh, identity and verify his identity uh, everywhere in the world. So it, sh it seems to be ideal, but uh, yeah, I believe so we identities should be as widely usable as possible. In currently we, for our online identities, we even cannot use one uh, online identity, digital identity in another website. So you have, for instance, one, for every website, you need to create login and password every time, and it uh, irritates you. I mean, you, you can forget your your passwords and so on. Uh, <clears throat> so it's it's very fragmented and not user friendly actually. So uh, I'm really struggling about that because for me, like I think I have like 100 login and passwords, and like for different websites and. Some of them are forgotten already, and it isn't very uh, user friendly and not practical at all. Um, in case of like driving license, for instance, in Norway, currently you can verify your driving license online by application, but I think it's it's working only in Norway. You cannot even uh, verify online your driving license in. Sweden or any other uh, countries in Africa, uh, uh, totally, yeah, you cannot do that. So for such kind of things, we need um, to develop these SSI systems more. Uh, seventh criteria is persistence. 
So basically, identities must be long lived. So uh, <clears throat> as a fa when the organization fails, like when Facebook fails, you 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 lose your identity, but uh, you shouldn't lose. You you must uh, the identity you have must be long lived. But uh, as um, but still you have you should have right to be forgotten. So it's uh, it's from GDPR and so basically every user if he wants to delete all his data, personal data online, he should be able to do that. And the last one I think is usability. So as I told, uh, even though our systems will be cryptographically secure and so it will the protocols will be uh, really good, but still the user friendly we need some user friendliness. We need user friendly platforms. So for basic users, they, they don't understand uh, what's happening on the other side. So basically we need everything should be user friendly and just by clicking and uh, users should be users should have cons consistent experience. Uh, and I think this is important. Criteria. And using these criteria, we evaluated some uh, SSI proposals. So there are uh, several um, projects working on it. So here we uh, we are evaluated four of them, but there are more. Uh, the first one is Sovereign. Uh, second is Uport. Sovereign is working. Uh, it's a kind of uh, Based on web of, web of trust, so they they have multiple organizations, uh, and they are based on um, yeah they 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 are based on open standards, and the organization is nonprofit. Uh, they contain members all over the world, and they rely on decentralized identifiers, which I told before, and verifiable credentials. They are, they are boosting that standard, that idea. And, but still, Sovereign is at early stage. Uh, so they don't have any um, website or application to test it or use it. So for users, they, uh, they didn't consider how users will interact with this skill. So they are more focused on on the background, how uh, identity should be verified securely, private, uh, privacy should be protected, and so on. So there are lots of work to do. Uh, in, in case of Uport, this Uport uh, is based on Ethereum, so, uh, and there is no central authority here. Uh, <clears throat> but we find out that in case of privacy protection, <coughs> that they uh, in the registry, as they use Ethereum, the JSON profile of users are like seen to, to the public, so everyone can see it as it's a public network. Uh, so it's it isn't um, if we consider in terms of privacy, it isn't good for users because you are showing some of your data to everyone. Uh, yeah, but it, it it can be solved, of course. Uh, so. They have their applications. Uh, I tried them, and yeah, they aren't very like user friendly as Facebook or any uh, like application. But still, they have it. They are they have QR code scanning feature, and they really are trying to work on giving some user uh, consistent user experience. Uh, the third one is Civic. Um, so. Uh, the Civic is similar to Sovereign, so they they they, they are like open ecosystem of int, uh, validators, like or some organizations, let's say, who uh, validate the network, and they uh, they are based on public permissions blockchain, open source, um, and the last one is Showcard. Uh, In case of Showcard, uh, we find out that they still have some central servers that act as intermediary when the data is transferred. So we cannot say that there is no trust in central authority. So this criteria is, they fail in this criteria, for instance. And I think it's the most, 
<coughs> valuable one. Um, and this show card is like for profit organization. So basically, uh, identity system is on the hands of some for profit organization. And they are still at the early stage. So this, um, um, this, this is a result of our analytical study. Uh, as you can see, uh, all these proposed systems uh, doesn't um, yeah, comply with the specific requirements that we proposed. And so yeah, in conclusion, so what do I want to say? Uh, we don't have uh, systems which um, so we don't have self sovereign identity system yet. So it's, it's our, uh, the, the projects and proposals are still on an early stage and they are developing. Uh, and the blockchain might be the most practical implementation for SSI. Uh, yeah, at least it, it gave some boost for the field. And yeah, but as I told before, uh, this field is like fragmented. Uh, we have different projects which approach uh, approach uh, problem differently. So we need to develop a standard for everyone, and we need some interoperable systems which are more connected. Uh, and the, and lastly, the important issue is that is the user experience. So many projects still didn't. didn't provide some user-friendly interface or didn't consider using user inter interaction with the system. But for, even though we will have some technologically developed SSI schemes, we still, uh, without some user-friendly uh, experience, they will not get widespread use. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so the, I had some references. Uh, I think I will upload this. Uh, file, I mean, this presentation to Wiki, so you can just see and check the references and you can read about these um, standards. And if you are interested, yeah, you can contact us. Uh, so as I told, this field is new and everyone is new and we need some contributions. Yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, if you have any questions. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. I'm worried. All the knowledge is just so for my very sense from very big. How how hard is it? Uh yeah, in computer science. Yeah. Um, for example, I like the idea, but I'm worried about it. Yeah, I see. From security perspective, it's really hard to develop such system. Yeah, and security is one of the important aspects to consider. Even though we declared some uh, properties, uh, so if, uh, people should have, uh, the system should be secure, yeah. I agree with you. Should be uh, connected to some hardware or something? Yeah, it's like uh, you will have your wallet, let's oh. say, like your application, and your data will be stored uh, in your mobile. For instance, one, one example, yeah. So you will have, but uh, the, syst uh, the problem is like you can lose your mobile phone, for instance. In that case, uh, that identity wallet should be revocable. I mean, you should be able to, yeah, get it back, but that's a problem also, I mean. So, yeah, we have many problems still. Yeah, so our identity theft is kind of an orthogonal problem to, to the self-sovereign identity system. So you have it with the normal systems and you have it here as well. And it just follows the normal ways of dealing with security. So how, like when you log into a bank using kind of federated or centralized identities, how do you make sure that nobody can steal it? Kind of the same here. 
it's, it's not no difference. Uh, the difference is that with self-sovereign, for example, an authority cannot impersonate you. So let's say you are a criminal and um, Norwegian government wants to log into your bank account. So they ask the bank, can we get your credentials? And they will get your credentials and they will log in as you, right? With self-sovereign system, because they can't do that, they can't pretend that they are you. There is no kind of backdoor. There is no way for somebody to pretend to be you because you kind of post your own identity yourself. Um, so it, in, in some ways, like identity theft is easier with centralized systems because if they are hacked, then people can steal your identity. But here it's kind of, um, you know, you, you don't have the central authority to be targeted. Uh, everybody is kind of individual. Yeah, but if you get hacked, you will still lose. If you get hacked, you will lose your identity. That's right. Yeah, so it basically <laughs> you control it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So there are some mechanisms like, you know, you need to use something that only you have, something that only you know, or whatever, like whatever the, the you know, stages for securing access is, right? Yeah, but uh, it could be like soft, I think. I mean, you can propose some systems to make it like it will, you will not store everything in your mobile and so on. I mean, they, yeah. they, 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 there could be any different approaches. I mean. Worst case scenario will be scary. Like, for example, I know, for example, the people that own the house is this blockchain technology and they, they, they might have some cryptocurrency and everything. Somebody steals it, you are broke, right? Yeah. You are responsible. Yeah, you are responsible.